Pentecost, also Reformation Sunday. Today we will be having hymn sing, so uh, start looking in your hymnal for your favorite hymn. We did have where you could sign up for a hymn ahead of time, so those are printed in the bulletins, but the rest will be, you call it out, we'll play it and sing it. Um, November 7th, next week, we will be observing All Souls Sunday and remembering those we have lost in the past year. Please remind us of anyone you would like to remember during that service. <clears throat> is God speaking to you? Um, reading is out for November, and it's the reading for each day of the week. The rest of the announcements are pretty much the same. Um, Wednesday at 3 o'clock, we have the lectionary study, 5 o'clock, the Facebook study. Thursday at 9.30, uh, the prayer group followed by sewing. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing uh, Martin Luther's great hymn for the Reformation. Uh, Mighty Fortress is O God, hymn number one, hymn.
responsive call to worship. Praise the God of love. We rejoice in this abundant love. Praise the God of hope. We sing praise for this life-giving hope. Praise the God of new beginning. We give thanks for this chance at new life. Let us pray. O oh God, you are our God, and we come as your people on earth. Gather us in, that we remember the ties that bind us together in your love. Write your law upon our hearts, that others may find us to be generous and loving friends. Strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may live in love, a love that transforms our lives, even as we help to transform the lives of others. In the hope of your miraculous love, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we will start picking hymns. Who, who wants to be first? <coughs> 440. 440? 140. 140. Thank you. 
that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, she and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return home from there. With her two daughter-in-laws, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughter-in-laws, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show you kindness, as you have shown kindness to your dead husbands and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them goodbye, and they wept aloud. And she said to them, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi <coughs> said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who can become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grow up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord hand has turned against me. At this they wept aloud again. Then Oprah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and to her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Please join me as we read Psalm 147. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have been. Put not your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. Never run for us, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose <coughs> help is in the God of Jacob. Whose soul is in the Lord their God. Who made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Who be saved forever. forever. The Lord set the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lift up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. And the holds the lid of his orphans. But the Lord brings the way of the wicked to the The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, from generation to generation. Praise, Praise the Lord. Our second reading this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 through 14. But when Christ came as high priest of the good things that are now already here, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not made with human hands, that is to say, is not part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more, then, will the blood of Christ through whom the eternal Spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our conscience 
from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Please join me as we sing hymn number 328, Surely the Presence of the Lord. wanted to what? Reform the church. 
And out of that, as y'all can see on your bulletin, he came up with several things that were important. Sola gratia, sola fide, and sola scriptura. This sola scriptura is the one that is mostly known, that it is what? Scripture and scripture alone. I wish he had also pointed out solo day. God and God alone. Because quite often we forget that there are people who worship what? Other gods. I mean, I was a chaplain for 26 years in the federal prison. And I can tell you, there were 30-something distinct religions. Distinct religions. There were Christians, but there, and, and many of us know there's Muslims and there's Jews. But there were Native Americans and Wiccans and Asakus and, you know, the list went on and on that I could finally say in a partridge in appearance. <laughs> and they do not worship the same one. God. As a matter of fact, we see in the story of Ruth. And I, I, I when I was a young Christian, I wondered, why the book of Ruth in the Bible? Well, we all know it's there because, as you all will see two weeks from now, that Ruth was in the line and lineage of David, who is in the line and lineage of Jesus. A very interesting story. Ruth, and the story started off in the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine. A famine. And so... A man from Bethlehem in Judea with his wife and his two sons left. They were forced to leave. They were refugees. They were hungry and they left. And the, the scripture said his name was Elimech and he had, his wife was Naomi. He had two sons. And he, he, he died. His sons married. Oprah and Ruth. And they died. And the scripture said they lived there for 10 years. And I'm not sure how to interpret that. 10 years after they got married, 10 years total, but for quite a while. And then Naomi heard that there was no longer a famine and she was heading back. But I want for us to be quite clear that these two sons married Moabites. And what that meant for 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 us in, in simple terms is the Jews believe in one God the living God the Moabites on the other hand believed in what? different gods as a matter of fact they believe in polytheism polytheism meaning many gods there was the God of fertility the God of rain the God of the stream as a matter of fact you, you looked around the world at that time and even today there are people who believe in what different gods and in this encounter we see that Naomi is going back and he, she tells her daughter-in-law you know it's best for y'all to go back there's no hope I'm too old I can't and even if I had two sons this very day you know, got pregnant nine months later, they'd have to grow up, y'all would be too old, go back. And we see that Oprah kissed her mother goodbye and left. But as we read it, listen to what she said. Go back to your what? To your family and to your gods. Because they believed in polytheism. Ruth was a Moabite. She worshipped many gods. But in that declaration, she said, Do not urge me to leave you or turn. For where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will. Your people will be my people. And your God, singular, will be my God. Naomi had an influence on Ruth that she realized that this polytheism idea is not the right religion, even though she was born and grew up in it. That it was far more important to believe in the one true living God. And, and she goes on and said, where you die, I will die. And, you know, 
that the Lord deal with me. In the Psalms, we read about his God. We see it says, praise to the Lord, the God who what? Created the heavens, the earth, and all that is in it. And so there were two different belief systems. One where many gods created specific different things, or one where there is only one God. And we see that encounter in the gospel today. Jesus was teaching, and the Pharisees, the Sadducees, different ones came up and asked him questions, trying to entrap him. And he said, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them dis debating, discussing all these different things. Noticing that Jesus had given them good answers, he thought, maybe I can come up with a question since I'm an expert, a teacher of the law. And this was a question. Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Of all the commandments, and, and most of us immediately jump to the conclusion there's only what? Ten commandments? Well, for the Jews, there were over 300 and something commandments. And, and so the question is, of all these commandments, which is the most important? And Jesus answered with a very important passage. And it is called the Shema found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And it's quoted, not only in Mark, but in Matthew, and it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is to love your neighbor. And, but here is the point. And the, the scripture went on and said, the well-said teacher, that's what the teacher of the law said, you are what? Right in saying that God is one and there is no other besides him. You see, in a world where they, they believed in polytheism, I mean, the Greeks had their God, the Romans had their God, the Egyptians had their God, the Moabites had their gods, the Assyrians had all these gods. Recognizing that there is only one God, one true living God, who created everything. And so on Reformation Sunday, we are reminded not only by grace alone, by faith alone, by scripture alone, but there is only what? One God. Who we believe in. The one God, the one living God who created all things. The second part of this sermon is what it said. You're right. But more important than believing in one God is to love that one God. The scripture goes on and says, love the Lord your God. And I, I'm glad that the scripture brings it out quite clearly with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. In other words, we are supposed to totally love God and God alone. In the midst of all the distractions, and I know, you know, Rosalie points out, I'm like a little kid, Christmas time, something shiny, and you know, we're all like that in some ways. Get distracted. But the point is, we are to love God and God alone. With our entire being. I, I especially like that it points out God is Trinity. We are a Trinity. God made us in His image and His likeness. We have a we are spiritual beings that have a mind and have a body. And, and that's what that scripture points out. Love the Lord with your entire being, with your soul, with your mind, and with your strength. My third point, this is a three-point sermon. Y'all haven't picked it up yet. My third point is that not only are we supposed to believe in this one God, and not only are we supposed to love Him and Him alone, but in order to truly be Christian, we are to love what? Others as ourselves. 
Because here's the thing. God loves all people, regardless of who they are. Bible clearly teaches, for God so loved the what? The world. Not just white people, black people, all people. Not, you know, we, we make all these distinctions. Not just people who attend church. God loves everybody. In the psalm, it points out, the Lord not only loved, but he cares for everyone. And as we read, the Lord lift up those who are bowed down. Are there people, let me translate that, people who are faced with problems, they're bowed down. I don't know if you understand what bowed down means. For 26 years while working in the prison, we had a lot of mental health people. And you could always tell a person who lived in the mental health building because they were bowed down. This is how they did it. They're bowed down. Life was heavy for them. They were bowed down. And it says, the Lord lift up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the foreigners, the widows, the orphans. The Lord loves who? Everybody. And especially those who are the least. Think about it. Widows. Naomi became a widow. Her two daughter-in-laws became what? Widows. And in a male-dominant world, by no fault of theirs, their husbands died. Now all of a sudden they were left widows without land, without means. And the scripture makes it quite clear. God loved widows and orphans. Orphans, even worse off than widows. At least widows are adults. They can try to Orphans, little kids, God cares. And here's the point. There is only one God. We are to love Him with our entire being. And in order to serve Him, we are to love others regardless of how different they are from us. The word of the Lord.
from all faith? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? <coughs> of tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor death nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue to love us and care for us. 
You allow the sun to shine on the just and the unjust. You allow us to prosper in spite of our sin. And this day, O oh Father, we are reminded as it is Reformation Sunday that we are saved by faith alone, by grace alone, and that we believe in one God who manifested himself through the scriptures. We ask that you be with our world, especially during these difficult days, as we see many are putting their trust in princes, in rulers, in presidents and governors, but when they die, it is all over. For you are the one true living God. We pray, O oh Lord, this day for our country, for its leaders. We also pray for the country of Canada, for the churches that are serving you. For many years we could say that we were a Christian nation, but today there are many who are not attending church. We think of Derek and others who, for whatever reason, have decided to leave the faith. We pray that the church, especially its people, will reach out in love. For your command is quite clear, to love God. But more importantly, the second part is to love our neighbor. May we be known as a people of love who reach out in love to those in need. Lord, we pray for Roger Johnson, the pros prospect of cancer that is aggressive. We pray for his wife Mary as they deal with this. Lord, we pray for Zach as he's busy with work. We pray for those who aren't here today. And Father, we lift up Violet, and she has undergone the first surgery. We ask that you continue to be with the surgeons, the nurses, and all who are caring for her. We lift up Ken and Donna. We lift up others who are sick. And Father, now we pause for a moment of personal prayer and personal confession. And now, as children of God, we pray the words, O Lord God, as we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and to forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Any gift shared in love can transform the world. Let us give generously as the morning offering will be received.
please join me in the offertory prayer. Let love flow through these offerings, that they may become gifts of God for the world. Amen. Please be seated. And we can sing one more hymn. Anybody? 593, here I am, Lord. 593. How much would you like to sing? Let's do one and three. Okay. <laughs> this 